In the late 50s and early 60s, the U.S. space program wasn't doing great. The Soviets had beaten the U.S. to almost every major first in space, and American rockets kept blowing up on the launch pad. According to declassified CIA documents, one night the Americans did their best to get back, even if it was a bit underhanded. Learn more about how the CIA managed to kidnap a Soviet lunar probe on this episode of Everything Everywhere Daily. This episode is sponsored by CuriosityStream. If you're interested in the history of the space program and of the space race, then CuriosityStream is the streaming platform for you. They have dozens of shows about the history of spaceflight, the exploration of the solar system, and of astrophysics. Prices start as low as $2.99 per month or $19.99 per year, one of the cheapest streaming services online. If you love to learn, and if you're listening to this podcast, you probably do, then start your subscription by visiting everything-everywhere.com slash curiositystream, or by clicking on the link in the show notes. When you think back to the space race, you'll usually think of engineers with pocket protectors or scientists wearing lab coats. You don't usually think of spies and cloak and dagger operations. However, if you just realize that the space race was part of the Cold War, then the idea really isn't that crazy at all. There was quite a bit of tomfoolery and skullduggery going on with spy agencies of the United States and the Soviet Union. In 1959, the American space program was not in a good place. The Soviets had launched the first satellite in 1957. Afterwards, Americans had a number of rockets explode before they could get their first satellite into space in March of 1958. Please reference my previous episode on Vanguard 1. The Soviets managed to get the first animal into space, and basically also set most of the other space firsts in the late 1950s. In January 1959, the Soviets launched the first probe to fly by the moon, Luna 1. In all fairness, this mission was actually a failure as the goal was to hit the moon, and they missed it. However, they didn't tell anyone that, so the world was none the wiser for decades. In September, they sent the first object to impact the moon, Luna 2. It would be difficult to say that it landed on the moon, because really it just smashed into it and was destroyed. But it was on the moon. The next month, in October, they actually managed to take the first photo of the dark side of the moon with Luna 3. The United States did manage a lunar flyby in 1959 with Pioneer 4, but even with that, they were still woefully behind. What I'm about to describe has actually been verified by the CIA, and there are documents on the CIA website which describe it at great length. Some of the details were redacted from the classified documents, but the gist of the story is true. In 1959, the Soviet Union embarked on a multi-country exhibition showcasing its economic and scientific achievements. As the exhibition was open to the public, of course, the CIA sent people to check it out. When the exhibition was in Paris, the CIA noticed something that seemed a bit odd. The Soviets had an exhibit about the Luna probe. That wasn't really surprising, given the recent success that the Soviets had with their lunar missions. What was surprising is that what the Soviets had on display didn't look like a model. It looked like it actually might have been a working version of an actual spacecraft and part of its propulsion system. This surprised many of the analysts. Surely the Soviets wouldn't have put an actual working version of the probe on public display, would they? As far as they could tell, it was real. The Soviets had put on display an actual working version of the Luna probe with everything but the engine. The CIA wanted to take a closer look. A much closer look. When the exhibition eventually traveled to Mexico City in November, they were ready. They realized that they could never get a good look at it when it was on display, as it was under guard 24 hours a day. The only time it wasn't under guard was when it was in transport. The original plan was to take the freight car it was located on while it was on a train, separate the car from the rest of the train, and take it to a separate facility where they could photograph it, and then connect it back to the train. They didn't have the resources to pull that off, so the next best option was to try to get access to it while it was being transported by truck between the exhibition hall and the rail yard. The CIA found out that the guard would take note of everything incoming at the rail yard, but it didn't have any way to contact the people who were running the exhibition, nor did he have a schedule of when things were supposed to arrive. Basically, so long as something was checked off when it left and checked in when it arrived, there was a great big opportunity in the middle. 
While the exhibits were being loaded onto trucks in Mexico, the CIA had bribed one of the drivers. They made sure that his truck would be carrying the Luna probe and that his truck would be the last one out of the gate. Somewhere mid-distance, the truck pulled over and the driver got out and a new driver stepped in. The original driver was taken to a hotel for the night and was given a nice room and a fine meal. They threw a tarp over the crate on the flatbed of the truck and proceeded to a salvage yard that they had rented for the evening. They waited for a half an hour in the truck to make sure that they hadn't been followed. When the coast was clear, they set to work. The crate was such that they could only access it from the top. Thankfully, the crate had been opened so many times that there was so much wear and tear that the evidence of their activities would be hard to spot. They went to work photographing and taking apart everything. They took off the panels covering the probe. They encountered a plastic seal and then had to contact the local CIA office to see if they could make a replacement seal in time. The office replied that they could, so they broke the seal and got into the probe even further. While the engine wasn't there, everything else was. They analyzed the fuel tanks, mounting brackets, antennas, electronics, and everything else. By the time the sun started to come up, they reassembled everything and put the top back on the crate. They covered the crate back up with a tarp, drove back to pick up the original driver, took off the tarp, and the original driver drove it to the train station. When the guard arrived at 7 a.m., he just checked off the fact that the crate had arrived, and that was that. The Soviets had no idea what had happened. There is no evidence that the information gathered was actually used in spacecraft design. Things were moving ahead quite rapidly in the late 50s and early 60s, so anything they found would have been quickly made obsolete. However, it did give the Americans a better assessment of what the Soviet launch capabilities are. By determining the weight of the probe and then determining the weight it would be when loaded with fuel, they could then calculate the thrust capabilities of Soviet rockets. This operation was done more for military reasons than on the behest of NASA, but it does show just how important the space race was in the history of the Cold War. Executive producer of Everything Everywhere Daily is James Makala. Special thanks to everyone who supports the show over on Patreon. Please remember to leave a review over on Apple Podcasts. Even a simple review can really help the show get discovered in the sea of other podcasts that are out there.